I'm just about at the top here. Um, my exit is over here. Right here is where I'm gonna enter it. Just gotta go through the block on the top of the nest head right there, into here. All right, Bill, lift it up just a little bit more. Finally, <laughs> I had to use this little pick. What a pain in the ass. Yeah. All I want to do is fix my halyard around, you know? <laughs> Teamwork. What's that? Did you get the halyard run? Uh, I'm just having my morning coffee here. Um, just staring out at this beautiful anchorage. And uh, yeah, it's been an awesome couple of days. It's a really beautiful place, Dry Tortugas. Um, took a really nice paddle yesterday. We saw a lot of sharks and a turtle. Yeah, it's been a wonderful few days. And now we are um, just <laughs> preparing for a shift in the weather that I am in particular not looking forward to. It's gonna be very windy. Um, there's a system coming through. It's gonna blow 30 knots and it's gonna blow for three days. So we're gonna be fine because the direction it's blowing from is basically from where the fort is coming, where the fort is. So it's gonna protect us. Um, it's gonna shift around a little bit, but we think it's gonna be fine, but we just won't be able to dive, um, which we've been doing a lot of. and snorkel um but we think kind of that the beach we've been going to in the evenings um that side should be fine so we should still be able to have our little evening routine where we go to the beach and hang out with um, brian and kaza and play with nugget um so and swim a little bit so that's good but yeah i think the next three or four days are going to look really different here so what do you think about this blow that's coming in it'll be exciting Exciting. Yeah, I like rough weather. <laughs> I think we'll see some big waves. I was thinking maybe I could find like a surf break or something. That'd be cool. Oh um, yeah, that would be fun, huh? Yeah. Yeah, I think it's be kind of exciting. I like blows. Like I always like snowstorms when we lived in New York. Yeah. I think we'd be pretty protected. It's true. I'm excited for all the amps from the wind generator. I just think what I could do with all that power. Um, <laughs> but it's gonna get cold, that's what I'm worried yeah, about. Yeah, it is gonna get like down in the 60s, which we're not used to anymore. Today's Thursday, it's gonna go Friday, Saturday, Saturday Sunday, Sunday Monday. and Monday. Yeah. See, boom, 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 boom. Coming in tonight, that's nine o'clock tonight. And it goes a little northeast. That's, that's tomorrow morning. That's Saturday still on the orange. Sunday still on the orange and yellow. I'm a little less, but. And finally Sunday, so Sunday will probably be okay. And then, then it's Tuesday's weakening. And that's hopefully the hole we're gonna be able to motor back to Key West on. Yeah. Since there's nothing here on the Dry Tortugas, other than the fort, of course, which you watched us explore in last week's episode, we're gonna have to leave this island and make a trip back up to Key West for provisions before we eventually leave this place and the U.S. for the last time. But more on that later. For now, our focus is getting prepared for the weather coming, beginning with re-anchoring to a spot with better protection for the wind that's predicted to arrive later tonight. We're gonna move a little closer to the land here because the wind's gonna come out of the north. Um, we can see these kind of crazy clouds. Uh, looks like a fun's coming through. These kind of like... Wispy wispy things that are like coming sort of from this direction where the fort is. That's a sign that the weather is going to be changing. So, um, it's really hot and sticky right now. Yeah, so basically we're moving the boat closer to that shore so we have more protection. And in full disclosure, Delos moved over there and we're going to try and anchor on their starboard side so we can get their dome. So this is kind of like a... Two for move. Yeah, two for move. We'd here. probably be okay here, but... Yeah. 
trailing a weight, a whole bunch of sand as it goes. Good enough. Yeah. Man, I'm windless is nice, huh? <laughs> I would not be moving 50 feet over. Oh my god, I know. Yeah, because we're, you know, where we're anchored now, we're probably fine, but again, we have that dual motivation with the dome. So we've been on Delos' port side since we got here, and that is not, does not work for picking up the connection. Quite as well. And for anybody who doesn't know, there is no service here. Zero. Not, not even a bar or cell, so. So that is not sort of good for uploading videos. I mean, so. it's handy because even like this morning we couldn't load things, but we got a patron notification for like, a, you know, we needed to send a link to a video, so. Here in Gladstone, thank it's, you for letting us know. So we're trying to find like a patch of sand. See, there's one there. So um, we're gonna weather a blow coming in here to the dry tortugas. Um, so I'm just taking care of a couple little maintenance issues. We've been having some trouble using our starboard side uh, spinnaker halyard with our code zero furler um, because it's going from the starboard side across to the port side of the boat on the bowsprit and the top swivel is getting hitting our jib and it's it's preventing it from furling sometimes. So what I'm doing today is I'm trying to swap the, the spinnaker halyard from the starboard to the port side. Um, I drilled some mast exits when we were in Annapolis. So I put together this little thing here. Um, it's a punch, which would happen to be magnetic, and a small hose clamp. And I have a pencil magnet that I can stick inside the mast. So I'm gonna go to the top of the mast and uh, drop this down to where the exit is and then try to fish it through the mast with my magnet. Um, I needed something heavy and something magnetic. So I chose to do this hose clamp. Um, this is Dyneema, this is about 200 pound break, so I should be able to tug pretty hard if I have to, moving the halyards through. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna go up the top and see what's going on. We also can't fly a drone in the national park, so I'm kind of excited to take the phone, uh, take the camera up to the top of the map. Okay. Oh, getting ready to climb up there. I'm gonna go to the very top with my messenger line and uh, drop it inside the mast, and hopefully you'll be able to sink it back out the bottom. Just about at the top here. Um, my exit is over here. Right here is where I'm gonna enter it. I'm just gonna go through the block on the top of the mast head right there, into here. And then it's gonna go down to the bottom of the mast. So round two, the hose clamp would not fit through the hole at the top of the mast. So I just taped it on with a couple stopper knots in a way. I'm not imagining putting too much load on this, so hopefully it's okay. <laughs> kind of a pain in the butt that went all the way up. Now I gotta come all the way back down and go back up now. <sighs> Tired. Unfortunately, Bill's second attempt was a fail, and now we've called for backup. Bill was hoping he could drop the messenger line down the mast, then simply come down and pull it out himself. But it's turned out to be trickier than he thought. It seems like the end of the line has to be dropped to the perfect length in order to be grabbed through the tiny hole, and it might require some jiggling from the top in order to be properly grabbed. In other words, it's more than a one-person job. in the way. That's the other unforeseen consequence when I cut a hole. Ah. <laughs> Where's the plastic tube? It's a conduit for wires for the masthead. This is my third trip to the top of the mast today.
thought I heard some flanking. Do you have like a little pick or something, Bill? A little what? Or like a metal coat hanger or something? It might be up against the side. Okay, pull, let it down. Down. Yeah, I'm gonna need something, Grace, to to try and pick it out of here or try it along the side. <laughs> I think this stuff is just too soft. Yeah, I had that concern. It just bends. I don't know, man. I don't really see if, I don't, I don't really think it's down here. No? Okay, back to the back of the Pull it up maybe 10 feet and then, oh wait. Do that again? Yeah, like pick it up two feet and then just drop it a bunch yeah. of times. It up just a little bit more. Okay. Finally, <laughs> I had to use Ooh. this little pick. What a pain in the ass. Yeah. All I want to do is push my halyard around, you know? <laughs> Teamwork. What? What's that? Did you get the halyard run? So the reason we needed two guys to do that job is um, there was some there was a piece of conduit which is like a piece of PVC pipe inside the mast that they run wires through to protect the wires. So there's the mast headlight, the wind instruments, all that. They run inside a PVC pipe inside the mast. Um, where we put the mast exit was in the very front of the mast, so the conduit was in the way. So what we did is I was at the top of the masthead, um, shaking the line back and forth, and Brian was able to hear it and see it go by. Um, it's, if you're by yourself, you can't lift it up and down and see, and see the motion to catch it. Sometimes it works out, right? Like, you just don't know what's going on. I have no idea what's going on inside the mast. Yeah, yeah. Like, when we cut that hole, the mast was down, the conduit wasn't in the way. Right? So as soon, when we put the mast up, all of a sudden the condo was like up against the yeah, front of the mast. So we just didn't know because we had the mast down. We cut the, the exit holes, me and Andy boy. Um, nice. So nice it became it became answer. a two-man job though. I mean, there's I a, a three-man, so I had that's to That's true, it. yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true, but it wasn't, I wasn't sure like, you know, sometimes you get lucky with those things, sometimes, you know, sometimes you need a second person. Okay, so the next step now is uh, to actually move the halyard over. So I'm attaching another messenger line. Um, this halyard is nice, it's dynamic cord. Um, we don't want much stretch for the code zero because we're setting halyard tension and it's a pretty big sail. So I'm definitely gonna use this one. Um, and I might just leave this line in for now or I might run a second halyard, I'm not really sure yet. So I'm gonna basically tie it to this weaving eye splice it's called. It's just this, this is like a non-load bearing it's just used to run lines through. So I'm gonna tie a bowline on the messenger line and then pull it through the mast so this halyard is completely out. And then I'm gonna reattach it onto the new messenger line and pull it through. 
Um, yeah, it should be pretty straightforward. If it hangs up, I might have to go back up there. Um, but after this, I'm not interested today. So we'll see how this goes. Sometimes it's smooth, sometimes it's not. Taking a halide out. Here she's at the top of the nest that I see. You're coming down. halyard is now out of the mast. Nice. So now that I inspected the halyard and have it out of the mast, this is in a new messenger line that we just ran to the uh, port side blocks for the spinnaker halyard. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off the, the weight we were using and we're going to raise this up and through the mast again. Um, and all we're really accomplishing is we're moving it from a block on the starboard side of the mast to the port side. And the reason for this is that our sprit is angled to port. And when the code zero is raised, the swivel on the furler is another spinning piece of top is actually catching when it goes across the four stay. It's catching and it's not allowing the sail to open up nicely and it's making it harder to furl. So we're just trying to avoid that. So I'm putting everything on the port side. Okay, so we pulled it through. Here's the end, came back out. Um, yeah, mission accomplished. That wasn't too bad, minus, minus getting it through. At least I didn't drop it inside or something like that. Inside the mass, I've done that before as well. That's never fun. quite a different place here this morning. It's like nine o'clock and we just went outside and it's cold. I don't know what the temperature is, but, and it is windy and we were both kind of up a lot last night. The boat was really rocking around. Um, even Delos is moving a lot. And that's a much heavier boat than Calico Sky, so. Ugh. And it was just so blissful the last few days. <laughs> and it really feels like a completely different place now. Um, yeah, and it's supposed to be like this for the next four days, so. Whoa. It's really rolling around in here a little I bit sometimes, know. huh? Oh, it's not gonna be easy to work. <laughs> Which is what I was planning to do during this kind of crappy weather. Yeah. Well, yeah, I didn't sleep much last night. I know. It was just a pretty active evening. Mm-hmm. The wind is just getting going and will do nothing but build as the day continues. There's really not much we can do but grin and bear it. I definitely said, I just want to get the stubber on the other side of this chain if I could. Ugh. I want to pull us, huh? It's hard to believe this is just the first day of this and that there are three more coming. But that's the reality and just another day in this cruising life where we ultimately have very little control. You have to take the good with the bad though, and this is a perfect example of one way we describe this lifestyle to people. High highs and low lows. We'll finish dealing with the storm in our next episode and then pick back up the regular sunny day cruising schedule. So join us next time to see what we get up to. It can take 10 people. Third time's a charm.
Behind that, uh, uh the, the D whatever. <sighs> okay, going back up. Uh, what's the top one? What's it doing at the top? Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> oh, Are you out. serious? Billion! Nice! <laughs> you know how much of a pain in the ass climber is, dude? Uh, see, he's, he's got it run through the shroud. Oh. On the wrong side of the shroud. I'm losing focus, kid. You have to go all the way back to the dock? Jeez. It's like a monkey fucking a mast up there. <laughs> 